So hello everyone. Uh, I'm Gitika from Hispindia and I'm here to uh, demonstrate the MR application, MR surveillance system built on DHIS2. Uh, I'll just give a short presentation to give a background of the MR antimicrobial resistance and how we started working on this project. And then I'll move on to the application to show the data entry app designed for this project specifically. Okay, so as most of us know that AMR is notified by WHO as top 10 health priority globally. And uh, there are various global declarations being announced. And the Global Action Plan has urged all member states to implement the national action plans. But they had asked for 2017, and many of the countries are working on their global action plans on MR. And the key recommendation is to have a surveillance system strengthening evidence and knowledge base through surveillance. So there is a big need for a surveillance system for recording the MR. So antimicrobial resistance is basically when we diagnose pathogens or organisms in uh, samples in human or animals or food samples, which are not treatable by any of the antibiotics. So we check whether a pathogen can be treated by antibiotic, a group of antibiotics. And we are seeing that many of the antibiotics have got resistant to pathogens, so the paths, we are not able to treat those infections, leading to high rates of AMR and leading to deaths because of the inefficiency of treatment. So as we see that this is the mortality and economic impact of AMR, where it's it's envisaged that by 2050, up to 20 million deaths would be there by per year, uh, leading to 2 to 3.5% reduction of GDP. And so this is the figures of deaths that will be attributable to AMR by 2050, in which we see that the major chunk would be 10 million deaths would be by AMR. Uh, I mean, estimated with the resistance being increasing to antibiotics. So our study is to see whether at the lab setup, what is the antimicrobial resistance so that we could accordingly help the hospitals in making their uh, antibiotic stewardship policies to decide on what antibiotics should be given when to the patients to reduce the resistance. So in India, there are a network of facilities, 25 facilities under ICMR and NCDC, which are reporting the surveillance data. But there is no system for reporting this data. So somebody is doing it in Excel. Some are just compiling annual data, due to which we do not have any evidence-based patterns to see the MR prevalence. We do not know the consumption patterns for antibiotic. And we do not know about in the hospital, what are the hospital-acquired infections uh, due to the uh, antibiotic resistance. So we've designed this AMR surveillance system, which we started in October 2018. And uh, it is built on DHIS2, in which we report, manage, and analyze the surveillance data in two ways. It is used by healthcare facilities, where their focus is on patient-based care, and they're tracking each samples. While it is used by research organizations or at national level, where, where they are more focused on each sample which is tested and the resistance. So in both ways, the analysis of the data can be done sample specific and uh, patient specific. And then we've also been working with WHO team on the GLASS software and integrating it with GLASS and HONET applications. But I think the focus of today's call is to show you the data entry app. These are the different features of the app. I am not going in detail because I'll be demonstrating the same during the presentation. But I would just like to tell you the workflow that exists in the system. So uh, once, the once the user logs into the application, he sees his hospitals. It is at the lab setup. The user who's sitting at the lab will register the patient by entering his demographics. And then he'll collect the sample from the patient, which needs to be tested. So he'll enter the sample collection details. Once the result is available, he'll update the pathogen, which is reported. 
and based on the pathogen reported and the sample so say for urine sample e coli is detected accordingly the system will automatically show the list of tests which need to be reported so say for e coli only 10 antibiotics need to be tested so only those 10 will be shown in the system not all the entire list of antibiotics so then the lab user enters the results for these tests and we calculate the resistance pattern and accordingly more results more organisms can be entered if detected so i will move to the demonstration now and i think if there are any questions we can take them after the demonstration Is the DHIS2 screen visible? Yes. Can anyone just confirm? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So far. So this is the data entry app, AMR data entry patient overview app. And the same thing which is done as in the records entry and all, all of that can be done in tracker capture also. But to um, ease out the data entry process for lab technicians, because there'll be different screens that they'll have to see enroll to different programs simultaneously, which is difficult for them to then enter the data. So we have designed this app to make users data entry easier. During the demonstration, I'll show you how, what are the steps which are being reduced through this app to make the data entry easier for the user. So in this app on the first page, we have added some working lists. So whenever a lab technician adds a new record, he can see if after adding the record, he still needs to enter the result. It will be available in this queue. Once the results are entered, organism is detected. The antibiotic testing needs to takes about two to three days. And after three days, the results will be entered for that case. So then he could just filter out in the pending antibiotic results and look at the patients for whom the antibiotic results need to be entered. Antibiotics result received is for clinicians wherein they could see the records for which entire testing is completed. So for clinician, it's important to see just the complete record. So they can see those in this list. The same is done for Android also. So clinicians while visiting each patient in the ward can access their, their lists in the handle devices and update their notes. This is the follow up option given because at times it will be a long list and the clinicians might want to come back to a patient again. So they could just mark or unmark for follow up here. This is mainly through the Android that they are able to do it because they are using the Android devices. And then for the samples where no pathogen was detected, it was not infected, they'll appear here as sterile samples. Now to add a new record, I'll go here. All of these are metadata in DHIS2. So we're using form names uh, in the app. These are the attributes which we see in the first section. So this is the enrollment page in DHIS2 terminology. So once I add these details, I the patient will get registered to the sample testing program in the application. So I'm giving a registration number. I'm just adding the mandatory fields for now. A gender and these details I'm just missing. So as soon as I enter these mandatory details, the patient gets enrolled and I move to the next stage. So this was not visible before this panel. Now it is available. So this is one of the stage in the sample testing program where I need to enter this date of sample collection. And my other fields will appear. 
So in terms of date size, so this is my event date and then I can see the data fields. To modify this page, I could add or remove fields from my program stages and accordingly they will be updated in the section head. So I'm again filling in the mandatory fields, the department of the patient. All of these are mandatory because the analysis is based on analyzing across each of these fields. So patient location, lab ID, which is again unique. Test requested, sample type. So now at this point, if I do not have the sample result, I can go back and it will remain saved as it is. If I have the sample result available with me, I can enter it right now as trial or a pathogen detected. Now, when I say pathogen detected, and I go next. So here I need to select what is the pathogen detected because accordingly next of the workflows will be made available. Now in DHIS2, this is a separate program because there are entirely different types of antibiotics and fields needed. But for user, it will be very difficult to go back and then search for the program and then again select, enter the same fields again. So we have kind of uh, made this app wherein directly from the sample testing, they can now go to the specific pathogen which was identified. And now I can select from this list of pathogens. So say if I select this one, I will, these details are automatically filled from the previous section of the sample type and lab ID. The location department is autofilled. Other fields I can fill as available. And now because I selected Enterococcus fecalis in the urine sample, so then I can see the list of antibiotics which need to be tested for this pathogen. So these are the suggested antibiotics to be tested. I see two sections, DD and MIC, because these are two types of tests which are done. Some labs have MIC machines, some do not have those. That's a higher kind of machine. Some have DD, which is disk diffusion, which is the conventional method, and they are entering. So now if I add any result here, you see this color coding, this is for resistant, intermediate, or susceptible. So 30 means this antibiotic is susceptible, and this can be given. Sorry, green means it's susceptible. If it turns pink, that is uh, resistant. So this is resistant. If you give ampicillin, it will not work for this bacteria. And uh, similarly, based on the results that you enter, if you enter results in both, then MIC results will, will override the DD results. So all of them have been done through program rules. So based on the breakpoint values, the rules run and accordingly values are populated in data elements, which are hidden in this form. And now for the same sample, if one more bacteria is there, I could say submit and add new isolate, or I could just mark this as complete. When I mark this as complete, this gets aggregated and pushed to the aggregate data sets where then all the analysis is possible through pivot table and data visualizers. If the clinician is accessing, they can directly go to the clinician notes and access the result here. I mean, enter the details or the notes here. And uh, just to show you one more thing. Because I did not mark this complete, I don't yet see an option to see the report. So now when I mark this record as complete, and I go back, I can see this report button available. So once I've completed the antibiotic result testing, I can generate a report for the patient, which is which can be given to the patient or the clinician can use it too. See, so in the same report, uh, more antibiotics and samples will coming in based on the data of the patient. 
and all my different events will be available here so in any case if the patient comes back after two three months with same infection it will be seen here and uh, accordingly i mean this is basically the listing down of all the events for the patient And just to quickly show you in the tracker capture. So all of this configuration is available in tracker capture and the same records can be seen here as well. Do you want, I mean, do you just want to see this or do you want me to show some dashboards or something so you could let me know? If there are any questions here. Show your dashboard. Uh, um, Gitika, can you hear us? Yeah, yes, John. Uh, there are some few questions. This one. Thank you very much. Interesting information indeed. I want to ask you like few questions and maybe I will discuss a few things with you uh, uh, regarding AMR reporting on glass. Do you use, uh, 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 does um, this system enables you to extract uh, information and to uh, upload to glass on a priority pathogens? Uh, does the system enable you to create antibiogram at the hospital level? And I want to see uh, the dashboard on what the, the analysis is the system is enabled to uh, do for you uh, to be used for uh, IPC intervention, for decision making, for uh, developing uh, stewardship programs at the hospital level. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I think for GLASS, we, we had made the reports which are required to be uploaded on GLASS. So uh, all of them have been uh, designed and available, but uh, there, there are discussions ongoing with WHO team because the, there was no, this was last year and there was no development interface available for glass. So we could not import them and test, but they are in the same format, which is given by the glass uh, site to, you know, up prepare the reports. Uh, then for the hospital specific antibiograms, so based on the hospital where we are working right now, they have some of the dashboards which I'll just show you and they have specific, they, they prefer preparing tabular reports on the quarterly data, which gives you a picture of top three pathogens, uh, what were the antibiotics given. So I could show you those reports also quickly. So I'll just share my screen again. These are some of the dashboards. Um, I'll just log in again. Most of them are tabular. We did initially have a lot of uh, graphs, column, and bar charts, but for the hospital users, they prefer tabular some of the pie charts to see the isolation patterns of the pathogens are available these tables show you department location sample wise what is the isolation patterns to see the uh, antibiotic susceptibility and non susceptibility rates we have this in other tab wherein for each antibiotic we are able to see what is the resistance pattern so here you see what the, how many were resistant intermediate and susceptible and what the hospitals are mostly using are these html reports
which give us a picture of the total number of isolates done and what were the susceptibility patterns. So they see both the percentages as well as the numbers. Similarly, we have another report. Here we have the top isolates along with the antibiotics, the, depart the location where the patient came from, and then which is the group of antibiotics that they belong to. Yeah, similarly, we have these organism-wise and antibiotic-wise reports also. Does that answer your question? Yep, yep. People are very happy. Uh, good, so um, we'll go to the, we have uh, three more other demonstrations. Thanks, Gitika. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to know anything about AMR, like there are history developers from here, you can just ask them, get the contact details so that like they can answer all the questions. Okay, so we'll go to the next presenter. We'll be Dung. We will show the custom app, which has been uh, used in uh, many of his uh, projects in uh, Southeast Asia. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Let me, I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Dung, a technical list of HIP Vietnam. So today I'm uh, very happy to introduce to you uh, some of our uh, apps. Uh, let us go to the content. So the, we today we are going to present three apps. Uh, two of the first, uh, the first two one is the iCapture and the OCA, and the next one is the Laos of Unit profile. So let me quickly go to the first one. This is I capture. So what exactly is I capture? I capture is a data collection app which combine the data entry and the event capture. So why do we need one app to combine both of the data entry app in data too? So we have one use cases in Lao. Uh, we implement the data set and the event program uh, in the same DHSU, DHSU instances. Um, so, uh, if uh, sometimes users are very confused, for example, if I want to in enter the data for data set, I need to go to the data entry. I want to enter the data for one program, I need to go to the uh, event capture. So, sometimes people are very confused. They don't know which app they will uh, use for the data entry. So, that's why we have uh, this eye capture. Uh, and the user can go to only one app to enter data for both the data set and the event program. So, uh, and uh, what it has, uh, it uh, support highly customized forms. So using this one, you can have more, you have customizable form, including the e data entry form and also the event captures forms. Okay, um, and this one also support the event program completeness. So what does it mean for the event program completeness? That would be the same mechanism as in the data entry. Uh, when you select one program and the uh, all you need, you need to also select the period. And the people can also complete the program for that particular all you need and period. Uh, I can explain, explain this more later. So and it also supports the data comparison between the aggregate data and the event. So what what is this? Um, in Lao, uh, we have one use case in Lao. We they have one program, 
but they input it in both the data they have the aggregate data for that program and they also have one another program for that same program so they input both the data so sometimes they need to compare the data between the aggregate data and the event data yeah so uh, so in this app we have some special mechanism special customization to achieve this requirement um, and the next one is the real-time program indicator calculations so as we all know for each event program we will have the program the list of program indicators every every time you need to get the data from the, these program indicators you need to go to the event report or pivot table to calculate the values and you need to wait for the analytics so for this i capture whenever people select one event program for that particular of unit and period we will have the list of all the program indicators and those are automatically calculated yeah and i will show you uh, show it too okay so uh, for the next one what are the different uh, between the eye capture and the event capture and the event sorry what's what's the difference between the eye capture and data entry and the event capture uh so whenever people go to eye capture they can select both programs and data sets on the selection for data entry we for the hr2 data entry we have in the data entry we can only select the data sets in the event capture we can select only the event programs but for i capture we can select both in the list we have the sections for all the data sets and we have another sections for the program so that's the first um, difference okay and the next one is uh for the program and data set selector it uh, move to the first selection on the control bar so by this one whenever whenever people select one data set or um event program the next the app will render the organization of unit selector and the organization unit list here will be filtered based on the selected program or data set okay so by doing this uh, we can have more performance for the organization selector and uh, all the organization unit which are not assigned to that particular program and the data set will be hidden so it can, it can save it more space and that's easier for the user to find their organization units yeah okay so uh, let's have a look on some of the screenshots as i'm showing here uh, you can see the first one is the data set and the program selector you can see here we have two sections the first section is the list of the data set uh, I'm searching for MCH. This is our development instance for now. So on the top, we have the list of data set. We have two, which is which are MCH, and we have many many program uh, on the below sections, as you can see here. For the selection, we have both data set and program. Okay, uh, this is one of the example for the first uh, organization unit hierarchy on your left it show all the organization units okay but when people select one program is the example if people select the hotline and this program is only assigned to all the province so you can see the organization selector on the right all of the facilities the district are filter you can see only list of the province yep okay so we go through the first part of the eye capture which is data entry when people select the particular data set you can see the form will be rendered here with some uh, color uh, this is very high customizable form so nothing special in here we have the input fields the mean max value the data history the audit trails the complete and run the validation just like normal data entry okay here the next screenshot we can see the mean max the comment 
uh, history and all this trail. But uh, see this one. For this example, I'm showing the forms for the dataset EPI monthly. You can see uh, some of the input, uh, some of the table have only one input field. But you can see on the table child uh, below, some of the field they have two input fields. And the first input field on your left hand side is the is the current value of this uh, of this data element for this particular unit and area. And the input field on your right is the value from event capture. So we put the input fields side by side for the people to easily compare the value from the current uh, data set and the value from the event capture for the same program. So uh, for this one, one example, uh, we have the EPI, EPI program. And we also have the EPI monthly data set. So people need to compare the data between these two uh, program and data set. And how do we set this one up? OK, so um, for setting uh, this one up, we create validation rules. For the validation rule, we have the left hand side and the right hand side. In my uh, in the left hand side of the validation rule we will assign the program indicator so this program indicator will calculate the data from that particular program yeah and for the right hand side we will have the data element in the data set which you want to compare the value with some value in the program yeah uh, so i assign the program indicator to the left hand side and the data, data element to the right hand side. Uh, yeah, that's how we make the linkages between the data element and program indicator. So basically, the value from the program, from the event program, will be calculated based on the program indicator. And we need to link that program indicator to the data element that you want to compare with. So that's the whole point yeah we move to the next part uh, which is the event capture so whenever people select one uh, event program here you can see this is the first screen yeah on on the left hand side you will have the indicators for the particular area and or an organization you need uh, so this list of program indicators are the program indicators belong to that particular program it will be all listed here and you can see on the right column we have the value so all the values here are calculated real time using uh, the data from all the events for that particular program for the selected organization unit and for the selected period we will calculate the values for these program indicator using that so that uh, should be helpful for the data entry person and on my right hand side here we have the all the list of the events list of the events for that particular unit and period for that program and on the top we have the register event button and also the complete button yeah So uh, that's a very special thing here that when people select the program, we also have the period selector. As we all know, the period selector is only available in the data entry app in the HI2. But here, when people select the program, we also have the period selector. Yep, that's how we implement the completeness for the um, event program. And we can also have the complete button on the top. Yeah, and how did we set this, this up? Yeah. Uh, so in order to implement the event completeness uh, and uh, real-time program indicator, we need uh, the period selector is available. So not all the event program are having the completeness 
functionality only the desired program and how did we do that first we are going to create one data set with the same name of that of the desired program for example you want to implement the completeness for hiv program okay hiv hiv positive program you will create one data set which also have the name hiv positive and we don't assign any data elements to that data set and next we will choose the period type as you want to implement the completeness for the newly created data set and the last step we need to link the newly created data set to that particular program and how we do that we will break one more yeah one more uh, custom attribute and we put the uid of that data set into the program that's how we link so when we do that the parent selector and the computer button will automatically show up that you can see on my screenshot here on my left hand is the completed data set which we created on the right hand side we have one custom attribute we will put the uid for that data set into the program using the custom attribute yep and so that program will have the same completeness functionality just like when people click, when people click on the complete button people cannot modify or add new any events to for that particular unit and period yeah as you can see this is a, a screenshot from the uh, event capture functionality on the left hand side we have the forms with some customized component on the right hand side we have the list of the events and the program indicator okay so next would be the oca oca stands for apply capture app uh, it's a uh, native application to be installed on the data collector computer uh, and again so in loud not all the regions have the internet connection so that's why we need to make one desktop app for all the people which is living in the region don't have any internet they can input the data and whenever they have the internet they can push the data into the data too and the thing is the layout and the functionality of the OCA is exactly the same as I capture so people uh, will not be confused when they switch from I capture to OCA the on the only difference between I capture and OCA is is uh, the uh, apply functionality of OCI. Yeah, you can see this is the one uh, screenshot from the OCI. Uh, the layout looks the same, but on the top we have the uh, data sync button. So whenever people have the internet, they just click on the sync button to push all the data which they have in their local computer to the HI2 instance. Okay, and uh, our last app is the Opportunist Profile. So the purpose of this app is the management of Opportunist across multiple instances of the HL2. In like we have three instances. The first is the HMIS, the second one is the Tracker, and the third one is COVID. So, uh, and each of the instances, they have the, their own Opportunist hierarchy. It's the same, but some, some of the only instances will be only by the available in sms or only available in covid something like that so we need uh, one app to manage all of them and uh, for this one we can also manage the other facility facilities such such as university warehouse ppm uh, drop-in center mass vaccination site etc yeah and as you can see the one uh, screenshot from here we have the summary with aggregated data how many facilities we have in this particular province for the army hospital central hospital covid isolation facility and this is the light list where we have the list of the facilities that we want to manage yeah and here we have the filter people can filter by facility category by type ownership and by service and managing more uh, and here is the detail page of one facility. We have all the information, the 
on the service with this facility is provide, providing. And on the right hand side, we also have a photo of the facility and its location on the map. Yeah, that's all for the presentation. Demo. Demo. Do we need a demo? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for sharing your uh, innovations, uh, I will call this, to developing uh, different apps. But uh, here, I'm just uh, confused about the one thing. Since we are using uh, Tracker Capture to capture each event, and here we have the same data elements based on which we have developed program indicators. And then at the same time, we are also we also develop the data sets, which is updated monthly. So since uh, we have a tackle uh, chapter on uh, all events, I think we can uh, summarize the, all the, the data from the program events to show the monthly data or the periodic data. Then uh, uh, by taking that uh, rule why the users need to update the same data again every month um actually this was um this kid this was like before like where they had the full uh, full list because some uh, people are assigned to do the event data which is daily and it's done by completely different people and then the monthly hmis form is filled by hmis people and the event data, the EPI people are doing the event field. So what was happening was like you used to get two figures at the national level. And then just say, why are we getting two figures? And we told, why are you entering this data? We already have all the event. No, 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 that's uh, EPI. But HMIs people have to enter the data. And then to solve this problem, at the, actually for the health worker level, at the facility level, what would you say? You can enter all this data and complete the button. Like that means we have finished the data entry for events. So what the SOP was, first finish the, your events and then let HMIs people enter the data. So then they can, like when they're doing the, the data entry, they can actually know what is wrong. So we are accepting both the data, but like then they know, okay, there is some problem in these uh, things. They haven't sent us the latest data. So then they can cross-check with their EPI team. That was the reason why we had to include this one up. Because before, like we also just say, if we have event data, we can push this data inside. No, 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 that's completely too different because it's HMIs is HMIs user and EPI will be entered by EPI user. That was the reason why we entered, why we had to create this one. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I have a question with your uh, presentation about OCA, uh, uh, offline uh, custom app. Uh, is it uh, available to install on Windows and if we have to design something or programming inside the OTA or we just uh, download and install? And one other thing, question is, uh, I see you when the in, uh, data entry enter some record and the user have to click the button synchronize. It cannot be automatically when they get a connection, for example, in other province, the, the connection or internet not stable. So uh, do we need uh, to click manually or we can and have another option to synchronize automatically when the internet return? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. For the first one, Whenever the people install the OCAs on their computer, uh, it will be run on both Windows and Mac and Linux also. So the first thing they are going to do is to just sync the metadata from the HR2. So that's the first step. Uh, we can say that for the first time they install the, the OCA app in their computer, they need to have internet to sync first sync all the metadata and also the data. But for the data people, must select uh, what is the time period they want to sync the data. For uh, let's say 
in the setting of OJ, we have the setting of uh, three months, six months, or 12 months, because if we sing a lot of data from the data tool, uh, that would be very, very, very slow and heavy. Yep. So uh, they need to, whenever we sync the metadata from the data tool, all the program or the data set will be on their local computer and they can start working on that. After the syncing, when they can bring their computer back to their home and start entering the data without the internet. Okay, for the next one about the syncing. Um, this is just one of the requirements. We can, yes, we people need from now, people need to click on the sync button. Button whenever they have the internet, they click the sync button and all the all the data will be sent to the data too. But we can, yes, we can also do like whenever the internet connectivity is available, we will sync on the push the data automatically through the data too. We can also do that. Yeah. Okay. No, no. But the reason why we didn't do that one, because like we wanted people to sync, and if they synchronize fail, it will also show what all the different things for the end user. So there is a message button. Okay, this has been synced. This has not been synced. And then they can attempt to sync again. Uh, that sort of thing. And then the automatic sync, we didn't want to do that one because, like, it's sometimes you have internet. You don't want to use it because, like, I want to use it for other things. When they, especially when they have this uh, uh, small, the mob, they use the mobile internet and they don't want to sync, even though they have internet. So that's why, like, we want to give the options to the users to yeah. sync. Yeah, then, uh, Dr. John, yeah, we should have an option that we should automatically or uh, manually. And because uh, the question is uh, some data entry, for example, they offline for a week. So the data entry for 100 record, so they need to click one by one, one by one, and it will take long. No, 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 no. Sync is one time. We'll sync all the records together. Yeah. You can enter. Okay, I like sync. Yeah. No, a sync is one time. So the, all the data, what is stored locally, all the data, like if you enter for 10 different program and all the things, it will sync one time. So a user have to click synchronize only one time, not uh, not one by one. <laughs> this is only for events and aggregate, not for tracker yet. <laughs> So it's uh, good to develop that app, but here uh, we have a one uh, Android platform app, BlueStack, right? So if you install BlueStack in the window, we can install Android apps. And there we can use Android version, aggregate and tracker. And that, there is also the same thing. Uh, uh, we can use the Android app offline and do the, all the entities. And then when the internet is on, the system automatic sync, sync to the online person. And then uh, the system gives you message. This TEI are not synced due to this uh, uh, either. So, so we have also that type of platform where we can use offline person in the window. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Any other questions? It's OK. So we have two more. So the next one. So uh, any other question? The MFL or the uh, sorry, <laughs> the org unit. Okay. So the next one is from uh, Sri Lanka. Are you presenting? 